The information in this module is accurate and complete to the best of our knowledge. All recommendations are made without guarantee on the part of the author or the sponsoring institutions. The author and the sponsoring institutions disclaim any liability in connection with the use of this information. Welcome to the Quality of Genome Assembly Lecture. In the last two lectures, we talked about making genome assemblies by taking a large number of short DNA sequences and putting them back together to create representation of the original chromosome. We introduced different assemblies and assembly methods and discussed their advantages and disadvantages compared to each other. In this lecture, we will talk about ways of assessing the quality of genome assemblies. At the end of it, you should be able to understand how depth of coverage is calculated. Recognize which are the advantages and disadvantages of long and short reads. Identify what is recorded in FRED's quality score. Calculate the expected genome size from the KMER using frequency-based approach. Calculate the N50 size. Identify potential problems of using N50 metrics. Explain the idea behind using Sigma and Busco. There are three main ingredients that are required for good assembly. First, the assembly should start with a reasonable coverage. Since next generation sequencers produce short reads, the low coverage will result in many assembly gaps. From the personal experience, they will look like deletions than when aligned to the reference genome. Second, the reads should be long enough to resolve ambiguities and repeats. Once more, short repeats that do not span the length of the repeats result in piling up of the reads. Pack bio reads are excellent for that. Ideally, we would like to have reads that span entire chromosomes and avoid assembly altogether. Third, error rate in the sequencing should be kept low. High error rates result in shorter KMERs, increasing complexity in the assembly and resulting in poor outcomes. In other words, any good assembly requires good data at high coverage. In the figure, we can see that different parts of the chromosome will have different numbers of reads aligned to it. Depth of coverage is calculated simply by estimating the average number of reads at each nucleotide across genome. Higher depth of coverage is achieved by generating more sequences from the same sample of DNA. There is also a way of computing the genome coverage from the distribution of KMER length. Genome depth can be estimated from the distribution of KMERs. The graph on the left shows two different genome projects. The curves represent relationships between KMER frequency and KMER count. The highest peak of the KMER frequency represents the average number of KMERs per site. The graph shows two genome projects. One has a peak indicated coverage of 5 and the other with coverage of 26. For the old Sanger sequencing projects, the point of diminishing returns where the additional sequencing yields little or no additional genomic coverage falls at 8x coverage. For the new next generation sequencing projects, the most popular approach is to use paired end Illumina reads from 200 to 300 base pair fragments. With at least 20x coverage in such reads, assemblers using either the De Bruyne graphs, overlap, or strain graphs can assemble contigs cover the unique regions of a larger genome. As it's previously said, a genome assembly can be achieved from 20x Illumina sequencing, but 100x is now preferred. The reads should be long enough to resolve ambiguities and repeats. Short reads lead to false overlaps forming assembly hairballs. Only the De Bruyne graph assemblers have demonstrated the ability to successfully assemble reads less than 50 base pairs. Once more, 
tag bio reads are excellent for that. Ideally, we would like to have reads that span entire chromosomes and avoid assembly. Longer is better. Longer reads make better assemblies because they span more repeats. However, in practice, long inserts tend to be less reliable, with a much higher variance in their length distribution. The lengths of the reads in the output can also vary. In the figure, you can see a graph representing length of the read of distribution output from ion torrent on the left and alumina on the right. While the ion torrent has longer reads, the alumina reads are all of the same length. The quality of reads can also vary. Not every base in the read has the same quality score. The sequencing output gives overview of quality in the quality plots. On the right, you can see the two plots from ion torrent and alumina data from the previous picture. Per base sequence quality plot summarizes the average quality of the reads per position, which is shown in red, the box plot per position in the read, shown in yellow, and the average smoothed line, shown in blue. On the left, you can see an example of DNA sequences and FRED quality score. These are gray bars above the nucleotide letters that are corresponding to each colored peak on the electropherogram. The rule of thumb is that median quality above score FRED quality 20 is acceptable. Read quality in the data file is incorporated in the extra line of the FASTQ file format. Line 1 begins with the at character and it is followed by a sequence identifier and an optional description like a FASTA title line. Line 2 is the raw sequence letters. Line 3 becomes with a plus character and is optionally followed by the same sequence identifier and any description again. Line 4 encodes the quality values for the sequence in line 2 and must contain the same number of symbols as letters in the sequence. Since each number above 9 has more than one character, the letters, numbers, and other characters are each associated with a quality score and represent numbers from 0 to 100. Read coverage, length, and quality look at the data on a basic level. There are quality statistics associated with the assembly itself. These look at the length of the contacts and scaffolds. The most popular of these is the N50 statistics. The N50 statistic describes a kind of median of assembled sequence lengths giving greater weight to the long sequences. In this example, 50% of the assembled nucleotides are found in contigs, contig N50, or scaffolds, scaffold N50, or at least this length. The larger is N50, the better is your assembly. However, beware of the truncated datasets that could artificially raise N50. In case of scaffolds, the N50 statistics can be deceiving because scaffolds can have a large number of empty spots or ends or identitermited nucleotides and still show you high N50 value. So a percentage of ends could be welcome to evaluate N50 of the scaffold. A useful estimate of your genome assembly is percentage of genes that has been identified. For this, a set of genes has been described that should be found in any eukaryotic genome. From the percentage of these genes found, we can extrapolate the percentage of all genes identified in the genome. In a program called SAGMA, a set of core eukaryotic genes, CEGs, are identified that are extremely highly conserved and present in low copy numbers in higher eukaryotes. 
On the left, you can see main patterns of the result that can be expected when studied a new genome sequence when some genes are found in complete sequences, some in fragments, and some not found at all. The results of segma analysis are usually represented in these three numbers. Recently, Sigma set has been supplanted by a newer and updated Busco dataset, and Sigma site stopped updating. Finally, I list a number of assembly gaps that can be found in the genome. These are associated with sequence coverage, segmental duplications, and repeats. There is now software that can identify and evaluate these. First, the absence of reduction in sequence read due to potential amplification or sequences biases creates dropouts where the assembled sequence is incomplete. Second, large segmental duplications of high sequence identity in orange and green make read overlap ambiguous, leading multiple gaps flanking segmental duplications. Three, satellite associated gaps are a special case leading to read pileups due to higher order tandem arrays of repetitive sequence. Four, muted gaps arise when the assembly is contracted relative to the true genome when overlaps are consistent with a smaller representation of a genome. Here's an example from our own study of a quality report from genome assembly giving the number of contigs, their N50 and segment completeness for combination of different tools, including the Brune and string graph assemblers, in a study of Hispaniolon selenodon genome. Quality assessment has also led to some estimates that can be made about the genome itself. Traditionally, the genome size was estimated from C-value data, which is the amount of DNA in picograms contained within a haploid nucleus. Computationally, the genome size can also be estimated from the Kamer distribution using the formula shown. Once we are finished with the genome assembly and quality, we can move on to genome annotation, which is going to be the topic of our next lecture. Here are some review questions for this lecture. This concludes the lecture on quality of genome assembly. We'll be moving to the next lesson on genome annotation.